All right, so because we are accelerated seven, you need to navigate back to Schoology, same way you have done. Guys, I cannot emphasize this enough. You need to be logging into Schoology through the cloud, through the portal. So you can go to the Phoenix website first and then go to the portal from there, but you need to log in with the portal. Once you get to Schoology, you're gonna go up to your courses like you've normally been doing to get to your courses and then click on join <clears throat> and you're going to join a class that's going to look almost identical to the previous class that you were in. It's all of the same materials copied over. The issue that I'm running into is setting due dates and things like that for people because I'm operating with two different sections of kids really. I have you guys that are working at one pace and then the other class working at a different pace. So you may have noticed that your due dates for your other assignments in the other page were wrong, like they were not what you would think from coming to class, because those are the due dates for the Math 7 kids. I can't make two separate due dates. So I've had to separate or delineate, fun word right there, I had to separate out our classes. So now you guys will be operating on your own page. After this weekend, I will be booting you off the other page, the other blended Math 7 page, because it's exactly the same right now all of your scores for the chapter 4 stuff are on the old page starting with chapter 5 will be operating in the new page you can tell the difference because one has what's called a math wordle as the picture that is the old page you use this one for chapter 4 our, our page has this does anyone know what this is representing what the joke there is okay well, what about pi? Andrew? So, the imaginary number, there is a number that doesn't exist. It's called the imaginary number, and we call that i. It is the square root of negative 1, because it is absolutely impossible to take the square root of negative 1. That's why we call it the imaginary number. 2 to the third power is 2 times 2 times 2, which is what? 2 times 2? Yeah, 2 times 2 is 4 and times 2. I ate. What is this symbol? Anyone know what the actual symbol is called? It's a Greek letter. Tom? What? Sorry. You guys keep moving. Um, hold on. Hold it. Crap. You guys all moved. You don't have your name tent. Hold on. Uh, Jeremiah. I knew I'd get there eventually. You just have to let me go through the list. You're thinking of those like Einstein things you've probably seen before that involve that symbol. That is actually a Greek symbol. You know our schedule that's alpha, beta, gamma, delta? Sigma, yes. I was actually in a fraternity called Sigma Delta Phi, so that was our first um, symbol there. And actually all of the symbols that make up our fraternity have mathematical meanings, which I always thought was fun. So this is I ate sum, as opposed to S-O-M-E. It's a joke, S-U-M. I ate some pi. It was delicious. So, as you find these mathy sort of things that are funny, you can always send them to me. I will, just so that it's on our um, PDF of the notes for today, I'm going to zoom in to our access code and take a screenshot. And that will land right on here. So there we go. Uh, nope. Uh, it delayed on the screenshot. So I'll take another screenshot. Did you guys see what happened? It took a picture of itself. Yeah, so that's kind of interesting. Delete you. Delete this page. There we go. So if you forget our access code or if anybody is not in class, there it is. One more time on our um, PDFs. And it, yeah. No, it's videotaping this screen. Whatever's in the dotted red, white line. So, do we have any remaining questions from Chapter 4 before we dive into Chapter 5? Any pressing issues from the homework? Um, Dom, do you care if I share the story from last night? So, I'm out biking. This happened, This will happen to all of us through the year. I just really appreciate that Dom called me or, like, reached out to me. So, actually, Dom sent me after class. You get a little prize for that because you are the first student to have directly communicated with me about a problem with homework. Um, actually, Riley came in and did too, or Kylie came in, sorry. Um, but, so Don texts me. He says, hey, Mr. Hudson, I'm having some trouble. I swear I'm getting the right answers, and it's, it just keeps telling me I'm wrong. <clears throat> Which, by the way, if it tells you you're wrong once, 
don't try the same answer again. It won't change its mind. If it tells you you're wrong, you're wrong. You need to figure out why you're wrong. So I was out on a bike ride. I called Dom or I got home, texted Dom back and said like, make sure you reduce your fractions. That was not at all his problem. So I like, then I said, okay, Dom, here's one thing. If you're going to text me for help, please let me know what it is you're looking at. So Dom then sent me a couple pictures of what he was doing. And I will almost always help you by asking you a question. So I was on the phone with him, put it on speaker, looked at my text messages, saw his pictures. I chuckled and said, Dom, what are those bars next to the numbers or around the numbers? And he goes, oh, and he knew like, that was it. All I had to do was ask, what are those bars around those numbers? And that, and he was all good. So then you're, you're sweet. You're done. Like that's, that's all good. So was that already your third attempt? Like, do I need to go manually change that score? Okay. You're good now. And Julian, at the end of class, remind me to check your score if it's manually changed. Has everyone gotten to the Schoology page with the I ate some pie picture? No. No? no. What's your issue? I can't get to When I type in the code, I'm trying to... Oh, come on. You're doing blank three. Yeah, make sure you're not doing oh, class. Good. Yeah, you're in it. Oh, well, just what I'm saying is it wasn't in the class. Oh, weird. You guys might have automatically been in my course, so you may, like, I don't know. So this course was actually created from um, Worthington, so it's a little different than the other one, so I'm kind of just also trying to play around in it and see what's up. Um, so go ahead and close your screens for now, because we will do homework at the end if we have time. Um, I'm thinking that we might have time, depending on how long-winded I get in this lesson. But your homework for 5.1 and 5.2 is a combined assignment. Like I said, we're accelerated 7, we're going to move fast. Sorry, please pass it back. So you have one assignment that is 14 questions for 5152. I need to turn it on. I just realized that. So somebody please remind me, either at the end of class or because I have another class coming, you might have to remind me during AO, but I need to turn that assignment on so you can actually do it. So somebody please remind me to take care of that. All right, so multiplication. What is multiplication? Like, why do we multiply? And this kind of can be shown to us by our number line representations of why we multiply. Would you guys have an extra? Andrew, why do we multiply? What, like, what is that process? So if I want to add something multiple times, <clears throat> I'd rather multiply. So the reason we multiply is to add multiple times. So essentially you're taking one number, that is your number you're going to add, and then you have another number that tells you how many times it gets added, or if it's negative, it gets subtracted, quote unquote, really just how many times you have that number. So multiplication, I want you to highlight this. Multiplication is commutative. What's the commutative property tell us? Yeah, Dom? Sorry. You might be thinking of distributive, which multiplication does do that. Yeah, so commutative, to commute means to move. So always think about commutative, if commute means to move, I can move the order of my multiplication. You know, we'll also kind of find how to get in a second here. <laughs> so that's why here negative two times three is the same thing as three times negative two, which sometimes it makes more sense to turn the number around, especially when we're trying to model things. Because if I'm trying to model on the number line, if I have, excuse me, 3 times negative 2, say I look at this one, how do I do 3 negative 2 times? How can I do something a negative amount of times? That doesn't really make any sense. But I could do negative 2 3 times, 
So I go negative 2 and negative 2 and negative 2 again. <coughs> so sometimes it's easier to turn my order around so the situation makes sense. Multiplication is just repeated addition. It is commutative. It is like our best friend. So, yeah, Andrew? And you can do that with any um, multiplication, um, uh, like negative, positive. It doesn't matter what the signs are. I can change the order however I want. Say there's like 4 times 5 times 7. I can make this 5 times 4 times, like it doesn't matter what way I rearrange them. I could also make it 7 times 5 times, like it doesn't matter. It's all going to come out to be the same exact answer. So we have, yeah, Ozzy. Um, so let's say negative Yeah, because think about it. If I'm doing, like, I have a negative two, like a loss of two. Let's say I borrow two dollars from Monica. Let's say I borrow two dollars, and I borrow two dollars, and I borrow two dollars. How much money did I totally borrow? Six. And now I'm in debt to her six dollars. So, my borrowing $2 three times made me have a debt of $6. So, think about the negative numbers as representing loss or change. Like, so, here's the situation that really puts us in perspective. So, we are doing research on a glacier. One of the coolest things in the world, I think, is being a research scientist because really what they do is go and collect data and they try to figure out solutions to problems or they really, like, sometimes find problems based off the research that they collect. So let's say we're doing, we're, we're, we're all research scientists and we're watching a glacier. Now, what is a hot topic in the world right now? If we talk about glaciers, and I'm kind of making a pun here, Julian. Yeah, a hot topic. But, um, so global warming, right? Which is actually more accurately called global climate change because it's not just global warming. There is a natural climate change to our planet uh, it's trackable. You can go back and look at the data. But because of global warming or global climate change, we notice that this glacier is retreating. What's it mean to retreat? Go back or shrink, right? So if a, um, if a troop is losing a war, they might retreat or run away or go back. So this glacier is going back or melting. It's either moving or melting. We don't know exactly which, but it's doing so at a rate of seven feet per year. Now, what does per actually mean? Let's dissect this for a second. Yeah, so per, when it's per one of something, since it's per one year, I see that this is a unit rate. If you want to notate that, we will get to those in just a couple chapters. So that's a unit rate. <clears throat> but on top of that, per, the word itself, means to divide. Now, wait a minute. This lesson's about multiplication. They're not just very similar. They're really the same thing. Multiplication and division are really the same thing. Because division is just multiplying by less than one. If you multiply by one-fifth, you're really dividing by five. If you're dividing by five, you're really multiplying by one-fifth. They're the same thing, they're just manipulation. So what that would mean is seven feet per one year. That's what seven feet per year, it's the division problem of seven feet divided by one year. But it wants me to answer the question, <clears throat> how long in four years? So I've got a trick to show you guys why we're doing what we're doing and I'm changing how I'm teaching this year so I'm hoping for some feedback once we get through a few chapters to see do you think this worked well. If this 7 feet per year really means 7 feet per year, and then they ask me how many or how far did it go in 4 years, I can set up an equivalent ratio to represent, well, if it's 7 feet per 1 year and I want to look at 4 years, how would I get to that equivalent ratio? Uh, Kate? Um, you could add 7s to the final Ooh, yeah. If I look at going from one fraction to the next, be careful. Because could I add 7s to the bottom? That wouldn't make sense. But what I can do is multiply by 4. And since I do it on the bottom, I do it on top. So really, 
this problem is derived from equivalent ratios. We set up the division because that's what the per statement tells us. Then we realize that the denominator I want is four years. How do I get there? I multiply everything by four. So what is seven times four? Huh? 28. Now here's the problem. My seven should have been, and I was waiting for somebody to point this out, negative. Because it was retreating or moving back, which means that my answer is negative 28. So really, if we are just trying to like answer the question, it'd be negative 28 feet. But this is the math of why. Uh, I was waiting for one of you guys to catch the fact that I didn't put the negative in there. I normally put them in at the, like right when I start the problem. I was just hoping one of you guys would. So if I'm going back seven feet and I do it four times. So like how far away from the board am I right now? Like, like, z like I'm against it, right? As close as possible. So now I go back three feet. I go back three feet. I go back three feet and back three feet. No, because the negative, so we're actually going to show the number line representation. That's the next thing we're going to do because it actually asks us to do a number line model. So here's what we would actually like if we want to draw this out and you artsy people will probably like this better. I'm going to put my zero way up here. Because I know what I'm doing is a negative change. It's retreating or going back by seven feet every year. So if you imagine that the glacier starts right here at a start point, you don't have to draw that. But if it starts right there at a start point, and after a year, how much did it melt or retreat? Yeah, seven feet. So that's a negative seven. So it lost seven. So now after one year, I'm at a negative seven. But that was only one year. It wants to know after four years. So the next year, how much does it lose? Seven more. So where am I at now? Negative 14. Another negative seven, and I'm now at negative 21. And another negative seven, I'm now at negative 28. Because every single year, it melted seven feet off of it. So now, my glacier would be way back here. There's a lot less glacier. Does this make sense? Yes. Now, if you want mathematical rules, there's a reason why we do the problems before we set up the rules, because I don't like having you guys just, oh, I do it because the rule. If you want the rule, it's right down here. So your key concept is normally worth a star or something so that as you're doing your homework, you can refer back to it and check it. If you have a positive and a negative involved in multiplication, it's going to be a negative. Here's really the rule, and this is dangerous because it's similar to the subtraction rule, but it's not the same rule. In multiplication, if I can pair up negatives, they don't have to be right beside each other. If I can pair negatives, they make a positive. So just like minus a negative made a positive, if I have negative 3 times negative 4, they don't have to be right next to each other. They make a positive. Anytime in multiplication division, anytime signs pair up, my negative signs, they make a positive. So in this lesson, we're not worried about multiple negatives. We only work with one negative. But when we get to the point of having 2 or 3 or 4 or 10 negatives, if you have an even amount of negatives involved in multiplication or division, they cancel. Because remember, that can be called the opposite as well. So we could have the opposite of a negative. What's the opposite of a negative? Positive. A positive. So that's why. Yeah, you pair two up. They cancel out, but then you still have one negative. So your problem stays negative. So negative 8 times 3. If I do negative 8 three times, an issue. Negative 24. I have one negative, so it stays negative. Uh, don't worry. I shouldn't have even talked about that yet. We don't do that right now. Like, give it, we'll, we'll get to those problems.
write negative 20 as the product. What's product? Well, it's the answer to a multiplication. So write negative 20 as the product of a negative and a positive integer in three different ways. So I challenge you, there are like literally infinitely many different ways if you use rational numbers, but they want integer values. So try to make negative 20 in three different ways. I need to throw some of that stuff away still. That's left over from the egg protection module unit at the end of the year. I know that they had they were gonna use that for their egg protection module. They decided not to. From the roof of the gym. I go up there with like I tie off my ropes and my harness and stuff. You guys obviously can't go up there. If it works out, we want to have the fire department come out and do it, but they can't always like they're not always free. So Dom, give me one way. Well, so saying most obvious, that all depends on what multiplication people are most used to. But I agree. 5 times 4 gives us 20, and if there's one negative, the answer will be negative. How else? Evie? Negative 10 times 2. If I do negative 10 two times, I will end up at negative 20. How else? Julian, did yours already get taken? Sam? Negative 20 times 1. Ooh, use the number that you want to get in your answer and just multiply by 1. You have another? Yeah? Ooh, I can flip around which one is the negative value, and I could do negative 1. 20 times, and that would take me to negative 20. Same thing here and same thing there. Yeah, we're not going to cover all those. I could make this negative 4 times 5. I could make this negative 2 times 10. Are there any others using numbers that we don't have up here? That are integers still? Yeah, be careful because we need integers. These are the only integer pairs. Because think about the factors of 20. We have 1 and 20, 2 and 10, 4 and 5, and that's it. Those are all of our factors. Okay, yes, but we already named those. Multiplication is commutative. We know. We can flip it around. So we talked about additive inverses last chapter, right? Where if I add two numbers together, it makes zero. That's the additive inverse. Multiplicative inverse, which is really fun to say, multiplicative. So multiplicative inverses are totally different. So please be aware when we talk about additive inverses, this is different than when we talk about multiplicative inverses. So the reason, Manasa, with your questions, this might help. The reason that we like talk about negative numbers and how they can pair up and everything is really because I can break any negative number up into a multiplication problem. Because if I have, let's say, um, let's say I have negative 7, how could I show that? as a product using a positive 7. Andrew? Um, positive 7 times 7 is negative 7. Negative 7. Yeah, I can just pull the negative as really a negative 1. Because it's saying negative 1 times 7 will make negative 7. Does that make sense to us? That I'm allowed to take a negative number and break it into a product using just the number and the negative 1. Any questions on that? So that property is why two negatives are going to cancel out. Because here's what I'm actually going to do. I'm going to take my negative 11 and my negative 7. I'm going to break both of them up. Negative 11, I'm going to rewrite, and just watch for now. I'm going to rewrite negative 11 as 11. Actually, I'm going to say the negative 1 first because I like to put my negative first. It's just easier that way. Negative 1 times 11, so that would give me negative 11. Are we cool with that? Then, my negative 7, I'm going to make negative 1 
times 7. Are we cool with that? So then this is a weird process that a lot of us get confused about. We could factor these things. I'm not going to do it. But if you're familiar with factoring, we could factor because the negative 1, I don't even want to highlight it actually, the negative 1 is common to both of them. I could factor that out, but that's not actually what we're trying to do here. If, we, if one of these was a variable, then I might factor it. So I'm just introducing the word so you, you recognize it when we come back to it. Factoring would happen because we have a shared factor in both of these. We'll come back to that in like a chapter or two. But what I can now do, since what, what is two parentheses right beside each other? What does that show me when I have two parentheses right up next to each other? Ellie? Multiplication, right? So this is really multiplication. So I have negative 1 times 11 times negative 1 times 7. Multiplication can be rearranged, right? What property is that? Commutative, right? So, don't get yourself all tangled up. Rearrange this and get rid of these parentheses, like the grouping parentheses. I'm going to keep parentheses for my negatives. I'm going to color code all this, so stick with me. I'm going to use my negative 1 from the blue. Then, I'm going to use my negative 1 from the red. Then, I'm going to use the 11. And then, I'm going to use the 7. Because multiplication is commutative. Order doesn't change anything. What's 2 times 10? What's 10 times 2? Order doesn't matter. Whether I have 2 sets of 10 or 10 sets of 2, I have the same amount of items. This doesn't, this is only a set because I made it a set. I don't need to put these in parentheses. We only do it to make it nicer. Remember, parentheses don't actually matter, really, unless there's variables involved. Because if there's variables involved, then things get more difficult. Right now, these parentheses are just keeping this together so that you can see it easier. They're not actually doing anything. Because if I followed PEMDAS and did parentheses first, I'd end up right back here at negative 11, negative 7. That's not what I want. I'm trying to dissect this problem to figure out why we do what we do. So, what other things can I call negative? What other names does negative have? That's not, that's a different thing. Yeah, Jeremiah? Okay, left of zero. What, what else can I call this symbol? It could be a minus, but it, here it's not going to be. I can also call it, starts with an O. Mm. Opposite, guys. The opposite. So, if I have the opposite of a negative, what's the opposite of a negative? Positive. So, these group up and cancel each other out and become positive. So, go ahead and catch up with me. Write this workout. You don't have to necessarily color code everything if you uh, don't want to. But these, essentially cancel out, become positive. Well, what's 1 times 1? It's just 1. Does multiplication by 1 do anything? No, it doesn't change anything. So now I have 1 times 11 times 7. I just get a positive 77. No, so you could really identify that two negatives cancel and just make it 11 times 7. So, you need to stop thinking about it as two negatives. You need to think about one of the negatives being able to change its name. Like Evie, what's your real name? Evelyn, right? Does changing your name to Evie change who you are? Okay, but you don't have to, like, I love what you just said, but you don't actually, like, change, right? You, like, change how you feel. So, think about negative 1 and the opposite of 1 being, like, Evelyn versus Evie. She's the same person, but we call her something different because that's what she wants and that's better for her. So, when we change negative 1 to opposite of 1, 
the opposite times a negative. Well, what's the opposite of a negative? Because multiplication we can replace with the word of. We're going to do a lot more with that vocab. The opposite of a negative makes positive. Yeah, so a negative times a negative just makes positive. Negative, like two negatives of anything. This work is unnecessary. I could just say negative times negative will make positive. 11 times 7 is 77, and you just get positive 77. Mm -hmm. Come on, capture. Come on, capture. All right, so any other questions from the front? Um, we're not going to do the sorting groups. We might come back to it, but that's an activity from my interactive thing that I don't have loaded up, which is not a big concern. It's not really that cool, trust me. We'll, we'll come back if we have time, and I'll make it on my own. Suppose P and Q. Julian, can I help you, bud? Well, you were talking while I was, so I assume you need some help. Suppose P and Q are non-zero integers with different signs. Well, what's an integer? Any entire value, positive or negative, right? Zero counts as an integer, so they're just saying, hey, don't use zero. So they're saying integer that's not zero. <laughs> so let's... Let's make P and Q then. If they're going to tell us P and Q have different signs, let's go ahead and say, well, okay, what could I make P? Well, let's just make it easy. Let's say it's 3 and Q. Let's make negative 4. They have different signs. Now it says, is the product of P times... What is that? How would you say that? What do we do with that? Sam? Negative Q, right? But Q is negative already. So instead of saying negative, negative 4, because then I'd be saying negative, negative, and that would be weird. People might judge me. I could, instead of saying negative, rename this as opposite because it's really going to be the opposite of Q. So P times negative Q really turns into, well I can replace P with 3, I can use that as opposite. My Q was negative 4 and what's the opposite of a negative? A positive. So this becomes 3 times 4, which becomes 12. So it is a positive value. Because if you start off with different signs and then make 1 the opposite of what it was, they end up having the same sign. So, Q is only, let me capture this, Q, the variable Q, is what we're working with. And we determined that Q was going to be negative 4. So, if I had P times Q, forget about what they had. If I had P times Q, it would be 3 times negative 4, because my P is 3. My Q is negative 4. But we don't have P times Q. We have P times negative Q, or the opposite of Q, and the opposite of my negative number, negative Q, is positive 4. Because actual Q is negative 4. So negative Q has to be positive 4. What would negative P be? It'd be negative 3, because I make it the opposite of what it started as. What would negative negative P be? Positive three. positive 3. What would negative 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 Q be? Negative 
How many negatives? Hold on. How many negatives? Five. So check it out. These pair forget about them. These pair forget about them. Negative Q is four. It would be four. Because this is essentially the same thing as that. Because once they pair, I forget about them. Any questions? I know that went a little far. Any questions? Mathematician or math magician, if you'd like to say. So, real easy class answer. So, anybody slash everybody. Negative 8.1 times 3. What will it be? Positive or negative? Negative. Negative because there's one negative. And what I want you to write is odd number or amount. Actually, I'm going to write amount. Odd amount of negatives equals a negative answer. I will tell you now, people have told me I make my G's weird. Sorry, I'm not changing. Yeah, they look similar to a Q, but my Q throws the loop the other way. So, yeah. You guys did not do much with cursive when you were kids, but that's why... I know some of you did, but that's why some of my numbers, you're like, wait, what is that? Or letters more so, not numbers. Now, wait, what? So this little tiny two, this little tiny two, A with a little two. I've heard multiple people say it already. Flynn, you got your hand up. Yeah. Elena Helfer. Exponent. exponent. So you can notate that this is an exponent. What's another name that we call that? It's an exponent or it's a ooh, not coefficient. That comes before the letter power. So it's either an exponent or a power. Now what a squared, because it's to the two. Hey Solomon, you getting this stuff written down with us? What a to the second power tells me to do. What does this number, say it was a 4 or a 5 or a 6 or a 10 or a 42, what's it telling me, Jeremiah? Yeah, that many times, right? So number of A's is really what that's telling you. And it's hard to write A's as a plural possessive thing. But that's telling me how many A's I'm going to have multiplied. So it's A times A. So really... A squared times B is A times A times B. Is anyone confused with what the powers are telling me to do? It's a number times itself that many times. So, uh, it would be A times A times B. Would you do the A times? You could still change it up. Right, but... but So hang on for a second. Let's give some values. They tell us A is negative, B is positive. So pick some easy numbers. Let's make A negative 2. Pardon the interruption. Bring Schwarzwalder, please come to the office. Bring Schwarzwalder, please come to the office. And we'll make B 3. So if I have negative 2 times negative 2 times 3, will my answer be positive or negative? Ozzy? Why? The two negatives cancel with each other, and this would end up being a positive. 2 times 2 is 4, times 3 gives me 12. Now, when we're multiplying fractions, I'm sorry that we did addition and subtraction first. We have to do it. I'm not really actually sorry, but I'm sorry that multiplication of fractions is actually easier than addition subtraction. I know that throws people off because so they're like, easier? How? It's multiplication. And actually, division's easier too. Because when we multiply fractions, all we have to do is go straight through the top and straight through the bottom. So when we are told, and I would draw those arrows there if I was you, when we are told in this example down here to take 8 ninths and multiply by negative 3 fourths, Again, the first thing I always do is think about your signs. 
Remember, that bridge ripped itself apart because of one missing negative. Always think about your signs right here. 8 9 times negative 3 fourths. Will that be positive or negative? Negative. I have one negative. It's going to be negative. Oh, okay. Then go straight through the top. 8 times 3, 24. Straight through the bottom, 9 times 4. It is not correct unless you reduce. On your homework, there are questions where if you don't reduce, that's a wrong answer. Even though the fraction is right, if it's not reduced, it's not done. So we can reduce this. They both actually can divide by, do you know the biggest number? Ooh, bigger. What? Jaslyn? 12. They can both divide by 12. So that then becomes negative, don't forget the negative, 2 thirds. Now, the biggest thing about the negative, it doesn't matter where it is. It can be on top. It can be on bottom. It can be out front of the whole fraction. If you have one negative, you got to have one <laughs> negative. Now, for this last one, really quickly, just for me to show it to you, I would make this improper. So I would make this negative 10 over 7, then times negative 2, and make integers into fractions. Because then your life is super easy. Straight across the top, straight across the bottom. Negative times negative gives me positive 20 over 7. I can't reduce this. I can make it a mixed number, but I cannot reduce this. So as a mixed number, what's it turn into? 2 and 6 sevenths. 2 and 6 sevenths. Please let me know if you have any questions on the homework. I will make it live before AO starts. Did I not have more than 100? Oh, uh, what gets drier as it, or what gets wetter as it dries? I know. No.